I'm Charlene Pula. I am a Hopi Tewa and Navajo, and home for me is First Mesa, Palaka, Arizona. My topic is, are evidence-based treatments culturally responsive for American Indians? So um, I've been a clinical social worker for 17 years, primarily working with youth and parents. And I've always had to select an evidence-based treatment that was not a cultural fit for the population I was working with. So there was always, I always had to adapt that intervention. But my question was, are these adaptations producing effective outcomes and are, are we seeing the reduction in mental health disparities in our population? The second is, are we ensuring that culture is at the forefront of every adaptation as we move forward and as we uh, provide services for our people? And as we all know, culture is healing, and culture is, brings about our ceremonies. It's about bringing our families together, our extended family. It's about Mother Earth, and it's also about our elders. That creates a sense of well-being and a sense of community. What are evidence-based treatments? Evidence-based treatments are an intervention that demonstrates an effective outcome in at least two experimental studies. Why are we choosing evidence-based treatments? There were two policies that came down, a federal po two federal policies that um, stated we need to change mental health delivery service systems. We need to show that the interventions we're choosing are reducing mental health disparities in the field. And through that, that changed how SAMHSA and IHS was gonna do business. So they re-emphasized that we need to select an evidence-based treatment. Why are we selecting evidence-based treatments? Obviously, we want to reduce our suicide rates in American Indian populations. We want to reduce signs of depression, loneliness, grief, and loss. And we also want to make sure we have our protector fa protective factors included in all that we do. Family, our sense of belonging in our community. Palmerville and Gone did a systematic review where they found two evidence-based treatments that for American Indians that had effective outcomes. And then I further looked into the literature and found that there were four evidence-based treatments that were adapted for American Indians. So I thought, okay, now we have at least six interventions out there that are workable or that are amenable for our population. But then I looked at the substance abuse prevention field and they have over 40 evidence-based substance abuse prevention interventions for American Indians. They are doing a phenomenal job in the field and those of us who are mental health could really learn for substance abuse prevention on what they're doing and um, their successes and challenges. And if you look at this funding stream, you could see in the red, that's mental health funding compared to substance abuse. Our mental health providers, our, our mental health programs are severely underfunded. We all know that there's over 670 health clinics um, under IHS and only 500 pre behavioral health providers to provide mental health services. So then I thought, well, what does the funding streams look like? Right now, currently, 80%, over 80% of IHS funding is coming through Medicaid and state general funds. So we need to identify what are our unique risk and protective factors in our communities from our cultural worldview, from our cultural translation. We identify, we develop those constructs, then we and American Indian communities create those measures so that we shift the science paradigm and that we make sure and that our cultural ways of knowing and our cultural ways of being are being honored and being equally viewed in social science literature and in social sciences uh, knowledge. I didn't really see in the literature about relational worldviews. In our culture, in American Indian cultures, our scientific experts are our elders. They create that knowledge that knowledge transmission of indigenous wisdom, of indigenous values, tradition and customs. They tell us how and why we do the things we do in our communities and that's a vital important when we're thinking about adapting an intervention or creating our own intervention. They have to be there to tell us what we should include and not include. So my call to action to everyone today is how can we create culturally evidence-based interventions for American Indians that include and honor our indigenous wisdom, our indigenous knowledge, our cultural ways of knowing to create those cultural theories that fit for our next generation to come. Thank you.